Waves are traveling vibrations of energy. That means that waves transfer energy from one place to another. Wave vibrations come from some kind of a disturbance. A push and pull disturbance will cause a vibration of compression and relaxation. while a side-to-side -side disturbance will cause a vibration of side-to-side -side displacement. In either case, wave frequency measures how often the wave vibrates. In this demo, one end of a chain is repeatedly moved up and down, sending transverse waves down the rest of the chain. If the chain vibrates more often, then the repeating waves appear with greater frequency. If the chain vibrates less often, then the waves have a lower frequency. So frequency is how often a wave vibrates. You can measure frequency by counting how many waves pass a stationary point in a certain time. That means that frequency is a ratio, waves per time, or cycles per time. A wave frequency of one cycle per second has been given the name Hertz, named after Heinrich Hertz, who proved that light was electromagnetic waves. Using Hertz as the unit for frequency makes it seem more complicated than it is, because like watts, it disguises the fact that Hertz is a ratio. But it is. Just remember that a 100 Hertz wave is one that vibrates 100 times a second. Waves also move through space at a certain speed. That is, how fast the wave travels, or the distance it travels per time. Notice that the material is not traveling forward with the waves. The material just moves back and forth. It's the vibration of energy that's traveling in a steady direction at a specific speed. It can be easy to confuse frequency and speed at first, so let's look at the difference. Here's our relatively high frequency wave, meaning the cycles are happening frequently. But is the wave traveling faster than our low frequency wave? Let's take a very rough measurement. I'll follow one wave with my cursor and count how long it takes to go seven centimeters. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. About four seconds. Now I'll reduce the frequency by one third. The cycles are happening one-third as often. Now let's measure the speed. One one-thousand, two one-thousand, three one-thousand, four one-thousand. About four seconds. So even though the frequency of these two waves was different by a factor of three, the speed was about the same. So waves have a speed and a frequency. There's a third aspect of waves called the wavelength. We use the Greek letter lambda to represent wavelength. The wavelength is the distance taken up by one complete vibration of the wave, or one complete cycle. In the case of our chain wave, with clear up and down movement, wavelength is the distance between peaks of a wave. We can pause the wave to make measuring easier. Now we measure the distance from one wave crest to the next. We can do the same on any of our waves. Now here's the interesting thing. The product of the frequency times the wavelength of any wave will give the speed of the wave. It might help to think of an analogy with a moving train. Say that instead of a repeating wave, we have a train made up of repeating cars. We can count how often the cars pass a stationary object, like a tree. That's frequency. Say we count three cars per two seconds. And say that each car measures 10 meters long. That's wavelength. We now have enough information to calculate the speed of the train. 3 cars per 2 seconds times 10 meters per car. The car units cancel, and we get 15 meters per second. This equation tells us that if the speed of a wave is constant, then frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. That means if frequency increases, then wavelength must decrease to keep the same speed. In direct proportions, where x over y is a constant, like circumference over diameter, then when x doubles, y doubles as well. By contrast, when x is inversely proportional to y, then when x doubles, y is cut in half. Let's look at an example. Say the frequency of a wave is 60 hertz, and the wavelength is 3 meters. I'm going to write out the full meaning of the units to make it clear. 60 hertz means 60 cycles per second and a wavelength of 3 meters means 3 meters per cycle. When we multiply, the cycle units cancel, 
giving 180 meters per second. To see why a constant product is an inverse function, just look at what happens to the wavelength when we keep the speed of the wave constant but double the frequency. The speed stays the same at 180 meters per second. Doubling the frequency gives 120 cycles per second. So the wavelength must get cut in half to 1.5 meters per second because the product of 120 times 1.5 gives 180. This was visible in our wave demo. You can take my word that the speed of this wave is constant because of some properties we're not going to discuss. But remember, we did take two speed measurements that were the same. Given a constant speed, look at what happens to the wavelengths as we change the frequency. More frequent waves means shorter waves. So unlike the ratio y over x, in which y is directly proportional to x if the ratio is constant, where x doubles y doubles, in the product y times x, y is inversely proportional to x if the product is constant. That means that when x doubles, y gets cut in half. Let's try another example. An ocean wave is traveling 1.6 meters per second. There is a distance of 8 meters between wave crests. What is the frequency of the wave? We are given that the speed of the wave is 1.6 meters per second, and the wavelength is 8 meters. So we need to determine what times 8 meters per cycle is 1.6 meters per second. 1.6 divided by 8 gives 0.2 cycles per second. Now say the wave speed remains constant, but the distance between waves increases to 24 meters. What is the new frequency? Notice that the wavelength is increased by a factor of 3. Therefore, the frequency must be cut in third to keep speed constant. That gives 0 0.067 cycles per second. So if the speed of the wave is known and the frequency is known, we can determine the wavelength. If the speed and wavelength are known, we can determine the frequency. If the frequency and wavelength are known, then we can determine the speed of the wave. Another aspect of waves that should be mentioned is called amplitude. Amplitude measures the height of the wave. In this diagram, the red wave has a greater amplitude than the blue wave. Amplitude is measured from the center line to the wave peak. The amplitude of a sound wave determines how loud the wave is, while the frequency determines the pitch of the sound wave. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. In a light wave, the amplitude determines how bright the wave is, and the frequency determines the color of the wave. We will explain more about light waves in the next math lesson. Increasing the energy of a wave increases either the amplitude or the frequency. One more definition is the period of the wave. The period is the time it takes for one wavelength to pass a given point. So the period is time per cycle, typically seconds per cycle. This is the inverse of frequency, as frequency is cycles per time. So the period can be determined from the frequency and vice versa by simply flipping the ratio. A frequency of 10 cycles per second has a period of one second per 10 cycles, or 0.1 seconds per cycle. More commonly, we simply say that the period is 0.1 seconds, because it is understood that the period is the time for one cycle. Let's do one more example. The speed of a sound wave is 340 meters per second, and its wavelength is 0.17 meters. Find the frequency and period of the wave. We set up our equation, frequency times wavelength equals speed. We know the speed and we know the wavelength. We can calculate frequency by dividing 340 meters per second by 0.17 meters per cycle. This gives us a frequency of 2,000 cycles per second. Next, the period is simply the reciprocal of the frequency, so 1 over 2,000 seconds per cycle, or 0 0.0005 seconds. The per cycle is understood. Now, what would the wavelength be in the above wave, assuming that the speed remains constant, but the frequency is doubled? Holding speed constant makes this a constant product, that means wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. So if frequency doubles, the wavelength must cut in half. 0.17 meters divided by 2 is 0 0.085 meters. I like to keep the per cycle to remind us the full meaning of all the units, but often per cycle is left off of wavelength too, as it is understood. This was our introduction to waves. In the next lesson, we'll focus on the specific kind, electromagnetic waves.